Everybody knows you should optimize images, but nobody likes doing it. And that's why all of these frameworks come up with their own components that make it really easy. And Astro is releasing one that both looks incredibly simple to use, but gives you a ton of power if you want it. It's effortless image optimization. Now, just to note that you do have to use this with Astro components. There is a functional option as well for the Astro image, but that has to be used only on server side. Now, what are the advantages? Well, it figures out the width and the height of your image by default and prevents any layout shift. It also loads it lazily so it doesn't load images until they're in the viewport. It sets a decoding to async. And on top of all of that, you can pass in whatever attributes you want. You can set a format. You can set a quality size. All of this is interpreted by the Astro image component by default. Additionally, you can use it in markdown files anywhere you want, and it just figures it out for you. And best of all, it's as easy to use as an actual HTML image tag. All right, let's go ahead and jump right in. Hey, what's up? My name is Chris and welcome to Coding in Public. As you can see, I'm using the basic blog template that comes with Astro or that you can get with Astro. The only thing is I'm upgrading it to Astro 2.6 and above. So you can do that by opening up a local terminal and typing PMPM update or if you're using NPM, NPM update or Yarn, I'm sure there's something very similar. Okay, so now that I've got Astro 2.6 or above, and you can grab this finished code in the description if you'd like to, I'm gonna go ahead and show you kind of the basics of how to get started with Astro. Secondly, you how to use it in Markdown, MDX, or Markdoc. And then finally, and thirdly, how to use the functional version of the Astro image component. So first of all, there are three steps you need to take to get started with Astro image. The very first thing is only because we're not yet at Astro 3.0. Astro 3.0 and beyond, you won't need to do this anymore, but for now you need to open up your Astro config and come in here and add one thing, and that is experimental. And then you just need to simply set the assets to true. All right, and then once you've done that, you should probably restart your server pmpm run dev, and that will get everything up and running again, and we'll actually import the new types that come along with Astro images. Okay, so that's step one. Step two is to move all images into an assets folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up the sidebar and directly inside the SRC, you need to create another folder called assets like this. For now, what I'm gonna do is just grab all the images that are sitting in my public directory, which is the root of the build and put them in this assets thing as well. So, so that I don't break anything, I'm just gonna leave them as they are and uh, just copy them over. And uh, then thirdly, we need to actually use them. So let's go ahead and open up, let's close all this stuff down. Let's open up the index.astro page. So this is the main route right here. And let's first of all, just import it like we would without Astro image. So if I wanted to add an image in here, I could say something like uh, import, uh, let's do, I don't know, cool image. And then we'll import this from here in my assets, placeholder about, sure that works. Okay, so now that I got this cool image, normally what I would do is come in here and add an image tag and my SRC would be cool image.src and all, we'll just leave this as, well, let's change it to like person head or something like that. Okay, and that works just fine. It's just a normal image component. You'll notice though, if I come over to the network and reload with the image selected, that it's 73.3 kilobytes. So not massive, but also not very small. So let's change this up and use the Astro image component. So I'll just import image like this from Astro at assets. And I have the Astro extension for VS Code, which gave me that autocomplete. Now all I have to do is come down here and let's just go ahead and copy this down. And I'm gonna swap this out here for image like that. Now the only other changes I need to make is I don't have to say .src, I can just grab the image and it will figure it out for me. Now let's go ahead and save this. If I jump over to the elements tab, you're gonna notice a couple of things. Once it loads in, which it has to do the first time on dev because it's actually processing this live, you'll notice that it's added several things. Number one, it's added a width and a height. Now the reason it's done that is to offset the content layout shift that will sometimes happen on sites as you're loading. Google will really ping you for this, so this is great. You don't have to think about this. It just does it by default. Secondly, it adds loading equals lazy, which means the image itself will not load unless it's close to coming into the viewport. Really nice that it adds that for you. And then finally, decoding async. This has to do with how the image is loaded. That's my understanding. So again, these last two are for performance reasons, and this one's for the content layout shift. So I didn't do anything but switch this out and everything is working great. So that's the kind of implementation I like. Barely any work on my part, lots of benefit. Now here's the real killer. If I come over to the network tab, you'll see if I can close all this stuff down and actually see it over here, 44.4 kilobytes. So a significant change in the size, it's actually converted it to WebP by default and all of this comes default. So that's kind of the basics of how to use Astro image, which is basically nothing. You just switch out the image tag for the image tag. Now, there are some extra things you can add, and there's a whole list of them in their docs, which I can show you in a second here. But one of those things is format. 
And like I said, by default, it uses WebP, but you can also use even a more advanced one like AVIF if you want to. And let's see the difference here. I think it was 41.4 or something like that. And now we're down to 25.9. So again, <laughs> this is a massive size reduction and I've done basically no work at all. Now there are a bunch of other uh, different options as well. If I come down this way and I'll include a link to this in the description, you can set your own width or height. So if you don't want to rely on it, figuring that out, you can also set the quality as low or mid or high or max or zero to 100. Now, depending on if it's a PNG or JPEG, this will be interpreted a little bit differently. So they give you these kind of generic names as well. You do always have to provide an alt, even if it's an empty one for like a non-descriptive image. And then you can pass along any extra properties. So like classes or style tags or anything like that. And it just will be added directly to the image tag because it's essentially a wrapper around that HTML image. So it can accept any props that a normal HTML uh, uh, image tag would receive. So let's come over here and one more time just for kicks, let's set the quality and let's set this to something like mid. All right, and I'm even getting great IntelliSense. All right, so now using AVIF and setting the quality to mid, I'm all the way down to 8.7 kilobytes. And you can see how little work I did here. Now, here's the cool thing. If I come up here, here's the original, here's the mid version, and I can't tell the difference between those two. Now, it's not super like, you know, detail of an image, but even so, I can't tell any difference from that. And this is like 10 times more. So really nice that you get this by default out of the box. So that's step number one. That's just using the Astro image component, really easy. Secondly, let's go ahead and open up one of our posts. And we're gonna add an image in one of these posts. So what is this, blog, first post, something like that, blog, first post. Okay, there we go. So what we're gonna do, first of all, is add it in the body. And secondly, we'll talk about how to optimize up here. So in the body, now you can, in any markdown file, markdoc file, or MDX file, you can simply add your alt tag, like person head. And then as you come over here, it'll actually give you access directly to all of these. And by default, I'm gonna to wanna to use these assets one right here. So let's go ahead and pull this in. And the same exact optimization happens. Now it uses just the standard WebP, but it sets all those other things like async and loading lazy and all that kind of stuff. And if I come over here and reload, you can see that I'm down to what, nine kilobytes, something like that. No, 44 um, down here. Uh, that's this one up here, but we'll talk about that in a second. All right, so right here, I'm down to 44 kilobytes instead of the 78 by default. So really easy to add this anywhere inside of Markdoc, MDX, or Markdown files. And secondly, how would you update this? Well, I'm gonna show you two different ways, uh, but the important thing is to know basically where this is processed. So if I open up my sidebar over here, and let's come inside of the blog, we've got the slug right here. Now this is basically taking in our content from the content collections. That's how this happens to be set up. And it's passing it right here. But notice there's no image, but it is passing all the data to the blog post. So let's go ahead and click that, open up in here. And in here is where we're gonna find that the image is being displayed. Now here's the really cool thing. It's super easy to adjust for this. I've gone ahead and we've got this pulled up. And if I were to come in here and click on this, you can see that it's not using any of those special features. It's literally just dropping the photo directly in here. Now it happens to not be very big. What was it, nine kilobytes, something like that. Let's see if we can reduce that even more. So what I'm gonna do first of all is come in here up top and import the image from Astro Assets. That works just fine. Next, I'm gonna come in here and let's just go ahead and swap this out. Actually, let's duplicate this just so you can see the difference. And I'm just gonna swap this out for image. All right, so over here, let's go ahead and look at it again. And right here, you'll notice I got all those advantages. Loading equals lazy and adds in all the rest of this. Now, because it's pulling from the public directory instead of the assets, you'll notice it did not actually compress it at all. Now that does bring up an important distinction between images. So images in your assets folder can be processed by the image component and by Astro itself. Images in your public directory are always just kind of default set to the root of your build whenever you're done building. So let's take it one step further and let's actually adjust our content collection. And that will allow us to actually use the Astro assets right here. In fact, you might be able to do this without it. Let's go ahead and check first. So if you come in here and I grab this and we add it right here, can I? No, so it's gonna, uh, error out on me. All right, so that's what I thought. So we actually need to update the config itself. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my config. And if you're not used to using the Astro content collections, I did a whole video explaining it and I'll make sure to link that below if I remember. Now this hero image, we can actually now get a helper function that comes along with this schema right here. And it comes in the form of a little function. So right inside here, I'm just gonna grab the image and then we're gonna return the Zod object. So that's all I have to add there. Now. Inside here, what I'm gonna do is grab the image and we're gonna run that function and then we're gonna refine the image itself. This will be the image right here or I can wrap it if I want to. 
and then we'll return some kind of validation. In this case, I might want to say like image width, it needs to be uh, greater than or equal to 600, which would be 600 pixels. And then I can actually pass in a message if I want to, something like uh, cover image must be at least 600 uh, pixels wide. Okay, perfect. So now that I've got that, it's going to actually look inside my Astro Assets folder. And you can see that it's saying, hey, none of these are in the Assets folder. They're all at the public directory. So all I need to do is come over here and open up each of these files and just simply add in that extension of dot dot assets or whatever. All right, so all the way up there. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. All right, so now we've got all those loading properly. However, you can see it's not actually pulling the image in here. Now, why is that? Well, let me show you. If I come over here, let's see. Let's close all this stuff down. Let's get to the slug right here. And here's where we pull it in, the blog post itself. And you might remember that we're pulling it in right like this. Now, this one right here is working. It's this one that's actually erroring, erroring out. So if I close this down, you now see all this comes in, and I can get rid of this right here if I want to. I can update the format to be something like AVIF if I want, maybe the quality to be something like uh, mid. And now we've gone from the 8 point whatever down to 2.5. So that's all I have to do to now pull this in. And on top of that, I get validation. So if I come in here and come to my config, and let's say I change this to something like, I don't know, 1600 something, you'll see now I get errored out because it says, hey, the image has to be at least this wide, even if I can't spell uh, image, all right? So let's change this back to 600. So that's how you would use the Astro image component in Markdoc, in MDX, or in the Markdown files. Okay, finally, let's talk about the functional aspect of this. In fact, I'm just gonna jump over to the docs down here and scroll down. You can see right here, it says get image. So you actually have more flexibility with this if you wanna essentially create your own image component. Now, let's go ahead and just copy this because there's no use in reinventing the wheel. And I'm gonna jump over and let's come into my index once again. So let's just go ahead and paste this in right here and I'll close this off and this right here. Okay, so we've got all this. Let me grab this right here. And in this case, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is await whatever image I'm looking at. Now in this case, instead of doing the my background, I've already pulled in an image right here. So let's go ahead and use that. So this will just be uh, cool or whatever. And then I can come down this way and I'm just gonna grab this right here off my clipboard and let's add this to the entire body. So as soon as I do that, if I come back this way and go to the home, you'll now see I've got this as a background image all over, all right? So not exactly the best use case, but what you can see here is that I'm awaiting this function of get image. Now let's go ahead and console log this just so you can see what we're getting back. It will give us an object with three things in it. So if I open this up, you can see I've got an object. It's got the SRC itself. It's got attributes, and then it's got any of my options that I passed along to it. So this would be things like original parameters passed, all that kind of stuff. So this is what you get if you want to have a more customized experience. And you can use this in something like MDX to actually run this function and optimize it a little bit more than you could in like a normal markdown file. All right, well, I hope that brief tutorial was a big help to you. And if you have any other questions, this documentation is great. As far as I know, not a lot will change between now and 3.0. But if anything does, I'll make sure to do an updated video. All right, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Happy coding.